This is a weird story. So if you're not into that, if you're not into unexplained mysteries and strange tales from the past, you should probably stop watching. But if you are, well, then welcome. Because this is one hell of a story. On the 26th of May, 1828, a confused-looking teenager appeared in the streets of Nuremberg, Germany. The people he approached soon found out two things. First, he would only repeat the following sentence, I want to be a cavalryman, as my father was. And second, he had a letter with him, addressed to the captain of the 4th squadron of the 6th cavalry regiment, Captain von Wessenig. In the letter, the anonymous author stated that the boy was given to him 16 years ago as an infant, and that he never let him take a single step out of the house. The letter also said that the boy should now become a cavalryman like his father, and asked the captain to either take him in or to hang him. When the strange young man was brought to Captain von Wessenig, he found out that the boy had a second letter with him. This one seemed to have been from his mother, addressed to his former caretaker, and it said that the boy's name was Caspar Hauser. He was born in 1812, and his father, now dead, used to be a member of the 6th Cavalry Regiment. The boy answered any question he was asked with I don't know. And as such, he posed quite a puzzle to both the captain and the police. If the same thing happened today, what followed would have probably been quite different. But the early 19th century was a different time. And so, instead of trying to decipher his past, Caspar Hauser was labeled a vagabond and sent to jail. But it was only when he went to prison that his tale started to really unfold. While in prison, it turned out that the boy did know how to speak more than just a few words, and he eventually said where he came from. According to his story, Casper has spent his entire life in a solitary confinement in a tiny dark cell. For the entire 16 years, he had never seen another human or had ever left the cell, and he would find water and bread next to his bed each morning when he woke up. Only once, shortly before his release, a man with a covered face came to his cell and taught him the phrase that Casper kept repeating when he first appeared, although he claimed that he didn't know what it meant. This extraordinary story soon got out, and it immediately attracted a lot of attention. Some people claimed that he was lying, others thought that he was a German prince, kidnapped as an infant. Either way, Casper was a hit, and his life soon took a turn for the better. Because of the attention his case received, Casper was adopted by the city of Nuremberg and given to the care of a local schoolmaster. And things were good, until about a year later, they got weird again. In October 1829, Hauser was found in the cellar of his caretaker's house, bleeding from a wound on his forehead. According to a story he told, he was attacked by a hooded figure, who told him that he has to leave Nuremberg or die. The incident supported the theories about Hauser possibly being a lost prince whose life was in danger, but his own caretaker did not believe him and claimed that the boy has a tendency to lie. Casper was then transferred to the care of Johann Bieberbach, a local municipal officer, but a few months later, another strange incident happened. A gunshot went off in Bieberbeck's house, and Hauser was found lying on the floor with a wound on his head. He claimed that he accidentally shot himself when he was reaching for a book on an upper shelf of a library. But his new caretaker also didn't believe him, and so he was transferred again, this time into the care of a local baron. But soon he was moved again. A British aristocrat, Lord Stanhope, came to the city to take Casper into his custody. It is not clear whether he was just curious or whether he had ulterior motives, but Stanhope seemed to have believed that Casper was related to a Hungarian noble or royal family, and he repeatedly traveled with him to Hungary to bring back his lost memories. But soon after, things got even weirder. Just before Christmas, 1833, Hauser came home with a deep stab wound in his chest. 
According to him, he was lured to a park where a stranger attacked and stabbed him. When the police went to the park to investigate, they found a bag with a note inside of it, hinting at the identity of the alleged attacker and saying that Hauser would know more. But by then, Hauser couldn't really say anything anymore. His wound turned out to be fatal and he died three days later. So what exactly was Casper's story all about? At the peak of his popularity, he was famous all over Europe, and many people believe that he really was the Prince of Baden, the only son of the Duke of Baden, who died as an infant in 1812, the same year when Caspar was born. According to this 19th century conspiracy theory, the son of the Duke did not die, but he was kidnapped, replaced with a dead infant, and locked up so that Duke's brother and his children would become the next in the line for the throne. And Caspar was allegedly Duke's son and the real heir to the throne of the duchy. When Caspar became famous, this theory was widely popular and the alleged attacks on him were presented as attempted assassinations by his noble relatives. The alternative explanation of Caspar's story is quite simple. Caspar Hauser was a liar. Most historians believe that he made up his strange life story and he faked all the incidents that happened to him in order to attract more attention. His injuries are explained as self-inflicted wounds that were supposed to renew the fading attention. And his strange death is explained as the one time when he accidentally went too far and stabbed deeper than he wanted. There's quite a few arguments for this explanation. Both letters that Casper had on him when he first appeared had the exact same handwriting, even though they were supposed to be written by two different people. The letter that was allegedly written by Casper's murderer contained the exact same grammatical errors as Casper used to make. All four of his caretakers described Casper as having a histrionic personality with a compulsive tendency to lie. And finally, Casper's story contained several contradictions. For example, he claimed that his mysterious caretaker only taught him one sentence, but later it turned out that Casper knew how to speak a lot better than he let on. And if he really grew up with no light, he would have probably been almost blind and physically handicapped. But Casper was completely healthy. The theory about Casper's princely origin was supposed to have been definitely debunked by a DNA analysis carried out in 2005. Samples from Casper's clothes were compared to the DNA of a relative of the Baden family. But surprisingly, the similarity was relatively high, which didn't prove that they would be related, but it also couldn't completely exclude it. And since the Baden family doesn't allow any medical examination of the child that was buried in 1812, the 19th century conspiracy theory still remains alive to this day. People believe that he was a prince back then, and many still believe it now. To be clear, there is zero evidence suggesting that Hauser should be a lost prince, and most likely he was just a manipulative compulsive liar. But even if he wasn't a prince, and even if nothing what he said was true, the life and death of Caspar Hauser are as fascinating today as they were 200 years ago.